the gaming world seemingly dominated by remakes of remakes and recycled ideas, Game Deck appeals to me on a number of levels. It bears certain similarities to Disco Elysium and seems to have some of the ideas from one of my favourite series, Westworld, while also containing a number of nods to one of the greatest films of all time, Blade Runner. It originally released back on Windows and was developed by Anshar Studios. Centred around multiple choices and branching paths, will you pick up Game Deck? Avoid it at all costs, or kill it with fire. Well, let's find out. A game deck is a game detective. This is future Warsaw, a city filled with inhabitants who like to spend their time in virtual environments. As people of all different classes look to escape the real world, known as Realium, the virtual playgrounds of these digital worlds offer escapism, but not without cost. The game deck, game detective, is a fictional work based on some short stories created by Polish science fiction author Marcin Przbiek. Apologies for the pronunciation. And you essentially take on the role of one of these cyber sleuths. Players in the virtual world will hire you into their game to solve a certain mystery or crime, and you'll have to solve several entirely unique ones throughout the course of the game. You'll find a number of varied narratives within each world, such as a missing wife who, unfortunately, has developed a slight fetish for unicorns, or a recent divorcee who's taken on the role of a graveyard keeper because he doesn't get much work because no one dies, and who is currently pregnant, in air quotes, in the real world using future technology that allows for the baby to experience what he does. Unusual doesn't even come close to some of these narratives, but they're certainly interesting. The game plays from a top-down isometric viewpoint. While the environments are fully 3D, the camera cannot be rotated or panned to zoom. Similar to a game like Disco Elysium, you move around the environments and use the right stick to choose what you want to interact with. This is a combat-free game, and as such, most of your interactions will be with other people. Now, before you begin anything, you'll be designing your own game deck. You can choose the sex, as well as their personality traits. Depending on which personality you choose, this then gives them points in a number of areas. While they have different names, they essentially amount to body, mind, physical, and technology. And with every choice you make in the game, you may gain new points in some of the areas, which then allows the player to branch out and specialize in many more. These have a direct impact on the gameplay and your case solving abilities. And while it's a nice element, it does feel somewhat out of the player's hands, as the choices you make would have to be quite contrived to force a specific leveling in an area to achieve the prerequisites in a certain skill, so it's best simply to ignore what you need and just play the game, putting points into skills as and when you can. The detective aspects of Game Deck are its strongest element. Each game world that you visit has its own set of rules. It might have its own HUD. It may even contain its own mini-games that you can optionally take part in, but more importantly are the other players within the world. As you interact and question them, finding out more about the case, you'll unlock more clues about any given area. Now, on the one hand, these clues simply act as a checklist, and you can either find a few or all of them, but the clues don't give you the full answer. It's up to you, the player, to make your deductions based on those, and you might be right or you might be wrong. What's great is that you won't be overly punished for a right or a wrong decision, but it will change the outcome of the story. A good early example was where I wrongly deduced something, and I decided to leave the virtual environment, and it actually cost the life of a character and completely changed the end of the storyline. I reloaded, made a few different choices, and had a much better outcome. The same principle follows through the whole game. There are literally hundreds of different choices to make, and they do have an impact on the way the game progresses. That alone is a novelty in a world of superficial choices, and it adds some real replayability to it. Deduction isn't just based on conversations alone, though. You have access to past information on other characters. Here you can read up on more specific information about their lives in the real world. You can also have phone conversations with past acquaintances you made in other games, and you can do your own research. You have three other subcategories, a gossip area, Area, a dark web, and then a gamer things information area. These are entirely optional, but if you choose to put the time in, you can garner some information which is otherwise inaccessible within the game world. Game Deck doesn't always get its pacing quite right. The missions have an episodic feel, a bit like the Witcher series, where every episode has almost a theme and a different monster, but there's an overarching storyline. Game Deck is similar in that way. However, in some of the stories, it loses itself a little bit. Earlier on, in the first two or three missions, the detective elements were very much at the forefront. However, I felt 
towards the latter part of the game this changed slightly. Sometimes it was too text heavy or the pacing wasn't quite there and some elements don't gel quite as well as others. I can see why they're here, things like the mini games and the overt references to some of the more modern toxic gaming elements such as loot boxes. These work really well but there are other moments where it doesn't quite come off. At its heart though the deduction system does work very well. I've sat for minutes at a time poring over old clues researching individual characters and still struggling to make my final deductive choices. For me that's exactly how a detective game should have the player react and at those times it was brilliant. A few things do let the game down. Perhaps its biggest flaw is some of the writing or at least the translation. There are certain pieces of dialogue which just don't make sense. I also noticed a few times where words were missing or in the wrong place which is a bit ironic in a game which references the fourth or fifth wall of the game within a game having substandard dialogue but the world building and cyber sleuth moments carried it through and it's worth a second or third playthrough as you will find a very different outcome at the end. I would give gameplay 16 out of 20. Controls are fine but there were a few moments where the nearby selection wasn't very accurate. Control score 14 out of 20. Visually, Game Deck looks nice enough. Understandably, the Nintendo Switch version has a number of cutbacks. Chiefly, the shadow quality is reduced on the player, but real-time shadows and lighting are still intact, and artistically, the game looks great. It's particularly pronounced, as each world has a very unique flavour. Performance is 30 frames per second, although you will notice a few loading stutters as you move about the environments, but predominantly it's 30 frames per second. I was very pleased to see a text size option in the menu, as well as one to change the size of the in-game selection boxes, and finally one for those who suffer with color blindness. Game Dick's audio is a mixed bag. Go ahead. But it's never exceptional. The comparisons to Disco Elysium with its masterful soundtrack from Sea Power are unavoidable. Here it comes off as a tiny bit generic. I was impressed with some of the sound effects though, and with each game having its own HUD overlay. Finally on visuals and performance at the load times, initial loading can be quite long, but when in game it's not too bad, and as mentioned the text size option in handheld mode certainly helps, although this is maxed out by default. I haven't personally experienced any crashes, but I know how it is in the world of Switch now. This doesn't mean anything from one player to the next. Let us know in the comments if you've got it and you've experienced any crashes because I haven't. Visuals and performance score 16 out of 20 and the audio scores 14 out of 20. Usually Game Deck will set you back £26.99 but it currently has a 40% discount taking it down to just over £16 or your regional equivalent and that goes on till the 31st of July. Its RRP is perhaps a little expensive but not obscene but at this reduced rate at 40% off I think the game's well worth it. It makes for an enjoyable addition to a reasonably limited genre that includes some new ideas and some old. On the one hand, values increased by the multiple endings, but on the other, it's slightly decreased by some of their lackluster execution. I personally would have liked the developer to put more time into fewer endings, as it can feel a bit abrupt. That being said, it's a nice addition to a genre which is very underutilized and is worthy of its reduced price. I give value 15 out of 20. For fans of the genre, Game Deck is going to be an enjoyable experience, but one that comes with a few frustrations. There are moments of real ingenuity in its design, but others which don't seem to quite marry up with the game's vision. Overall, it's enjoyable though, and it gets a switch up score of 75%. If you enjoy the channel, then do check out one of these other videos. Save 10% on all of your games using code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg, and thanks to our patrons. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it SWITCHUP. Cheers, guys. See ya!